We left Todd out here for five minutes to learn, man. Oh my god. <laughs> we're in deep now, boys. Yeah, we're real deep. Yeah, we're real deep. Here's your special delivery. So we just got these in the mail. These are our custom Mentor struts that Mentor built for us. So you can see here, they actually machined these bodies for us and welded them on. This is a cast piece from AFCO. But they machined a body for it and then found a, a shaft out of another shock that would work in here uh, to try to get us a shorter strut to fit underneath the front end of this thing that still has a good amount of travel for front side no prep. As you can see down here, so this is the strut that was originally on the front of Billy's Camaro. This is our new strut from Mentor. These are the other four and a half inch travel Mentor struts that we tried in the last video to fit, and they were really close to fitting. Oh, we're already <laughs> way, one way above the front end and two into the front end, the side of the front end. We're not that close. And then these are the strange struts that we originally tried to fit on here that were just way, way too tall. You can see this strut is shorter than these two struts, but it's still taller than the little three inch stroke Pro Mod strut that originally was on here. So you can see that strut only has three and a half inches of front end travel. Our new strut has almost six inches of travel. The other Mentor strut had five inches. So even though this strut is shorter, it has an inch more travel still and then these strangers are huge they're like seven seven and a half inches of front end travel but that's just not possible without sticking them way out the hood so we're trying to find a happy medium of fitting it under the hood and still having a good usable amount of front end travel so we're gonna mock these bad boys up on here and see if they fit <laughs> We got our caster set up at 10 degrees, right where we want it. These struts, they're just for mock-up. They don't have any valving in them. So I must, I'm not gonna put a bump stop or anything in here just cause I don't know how high I need it to be. So we'll stick it up. We'll kind of put it together here and then we'll put the front end on and see how much room we have above the top of this strut. We'll go from there. So that's fully compressed, so that's, you could run it like this, but it would literally be, have no up travel at all. So we'll see how much room we got. Ooh. It is tight. <laughs> Hey, as they say, if it fits, it ships. It fits, it ships. <laughs> so, <laughs> we could maybe bring the strut up like a quarter inch before it touches the front end. That's about it. But it does fit in there. You know, worst case scenario, if we wanted a little bit of up travel, we'd just have to raise the ride height of the car hair, which isn't the end of the world. But it does fit. Now this isn't gonna fit at all. I don't even think we could get a spring in there. Oh, yeah. So that's, this front tube work's still definitely not gonna work. So. so we are gonna have to chop. That's what it's looking like. All right, let's pull this back off, Todd. Mm. Yeah. So basically we gotta run a tube into the back of the strut cup and then we'll run a tube down. So probably be easiest just to get rid of this whole entire tube. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It can it just connects into the back of the A-pillar there. So I think what we'll do is we'll just cut it off right here yeah. uh, on the A-pillar and clean it up. And then we'll just run a new tube, straight tube, off of here through the existing hole in the firewall and into the back of the strut cup. And then we'll run it, do the same thing with this bottom diagonal. We'll cut it off, clean it up, and run a new tube up into the bottom of this tube and then we'll have to run a new tube off the front here down and then a tube 
down to here and remount the front motor plate tabs. So basically we're gonna have to cut everything off the front end except for the main lower frame rails and start over. Fun. Yeah. It's gonna be a new job. With all the cutting, it's still worth it to use these. And since we're doing so much modification, it's still gonna make sense to use these instead of the crazy long travel. Well, yeah, the, you can't afford to the use strange those ones. ones. There's no way to make them work. They'd yeah. be sticking no up matter the what. Hood, or the ride height from the front end would be super tall on the car. It'd be shaking like this. Yeah, we yeah. don't want that. We don't want that. It looks like serial number 00001 might be the ticket. Oh, he's gonna be a prototype. <laughs> that was prototype dude. Yeah. Some are limited. Billy's gonna be the test dummy. What, I, what so. I was thinking is like, you know, we why don't we cut this off? Yeah, at absolutely. First at a point where we could potentially still slug it. Um, you know, because like, and then and see what it's like, and then decide if we want to cut it the rest of the way out. Because if you, I mean, that's gonna be hard to cut that thing out of there. So if we like left a stub to what? where we could like put a bend in it and come up to here somehow. Maybe. We could potentially do that on the lower one, but the top one I wanna. Yeah, no, this one would be that bad, but if you just like, it's almost like the whole like floor like area. Well, no, I guess that's just riveted in. Yeah. Well, let's just start here. Let's just start by obviously getting these guys off and probably just go ahead and take the rack off. Just strip everything off the yeah. We're gonna be rolling that rack down, aren't we? Probably, I don't know, we'll see. But regardless, let's just strip everything off the front end and then just go ahead and just, go ahead and just rough cut them, just whack, whack. Why are you wiping it down? Put WD-40 on it so it doesn't rust. Oh. It's already getting a little bit of surface rough. And then if I'm like really cutting super hard on the front end and I start dripping sweat on it, oh, it'll get like all it. nasty. You gonna be working up that much of a sweat on this thing? I might have my shirt off. That'll be a thumbnail. Actually, why don't you just go ahead and take that shirt off right now, pretty boy. <laughs> um, get that big cool out. Dude. We're gonna have to start a Patreon <laughs> or an OnlyFans for that. <laughs> we could use a subscriber only YouTube. That could be exclusive content. TSR unclothed. Unclothed, after dark. TSR the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Play soldier. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much going on. Yeah. Back here. <laughs> Everybody else takes advantage of their women to try to get we're likes. Gonna, uh, we're gonna take advantage of our boys. <laughs> <laughs> Put on this yoga pants. I, I've been saying it for years, dude. That guy right there. Thing. America's Look at that power right. stance. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. D's got a. D's got a. Talking about us. Rick's the one with the dump yeah, truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thumper yeah, back yeah. there. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Sweet. It's cutting time. Yep. To the inside? Nope, so I think we might have already talked about this on a previous video, but like when you're doing something like this, mm -hmm. as soon as all these bars are welded, they get tension and then it gets even more tension as it's raced. It's about to pop. So yeah, I'll always go through, this is actually a Jaybird trick. You go through and cut like almost all the way, but leave it a little bit attached. Mm -hmm. So it's not trying to bind up and pinch your blade. So yeah. now I've got like almost a relief cut and everything And then I'll go back through and final cut everything gotcha. So that's why I started and went all the way around and put a little bit of a cut Moments later Like that right there <laughs> Yeah, all that the relief enough. cut didn't really do what it was supposed to do that time You're on the wrong side. Huh? You never cut a tree down? No I did a little relief cut and everything first, hoping that it wouldn't spring and it still sprung. I'll say, you had the blade buried all the way through the tube. I'll say you cut halfway through on this side and then come from the other side and cut the other half so that you don't have entire blade engagement. I never if claimed to be a lumberjack, If you ever cut your down, you know that when you go and you get your chainsaw stuck halfway through. <laughs> I never claimed to be no lumberjack. 
I'll say Jake ain't a lumberjack either. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too soon. Now you're gonna have to ask Jake about his tree stuff. I have an extra SD card. It might take a minute. <laughs> 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 Old Jebber died. He's like, what well, that was, was, it was 1964 <laughs> and I just got done churning my butter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and there he is. You don't even know what we're talking about. Jake! Jake! Come here, buddy. <laughs> we want to... What? <laughs> we want to hear your tree story. <laughs> what happened? Tell, what happened? Man. You know... <laughs> 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 Oh my God. Man, I was getting ready to go. I'm gonna cut the tree down. I took care of this property for an old lady, good friend of ours. Go up there, walk down to the tree, figuring out where I'm gonna cut it, you know? <laughs> Roughly like 20 something foot tall. Yeah. About yay big around. Yeah. It had like 45 rings, so it must have been around that, <laughs> that age. Yeah. It was all Give or take. Yeah, yeah, give or take. <laughs> but no, I. Uh, I go to walk back up to the truck to get the chainsaw, and the uh, wind gets up. I hear something crackling behind me, and as soon as I start turning around, that thing pal drove me into the ground. Oh. Hit me up here, beat up my shoulder and whatnot. And didn't knock me out, luckily. Took you long enough. Old Jebediah. He's gonna get a stolen valor someday from an Amish guy. <laughs> Did you ever see the Stolen Valor video? Oh, They're yeah, like, yeah. you ain't a soldier. Come up here and get pressed by an Amish guy on a horse and buggy. <laughs> he ain't really Amish. <laughs>
Yeah, we're real deep. Yeah, we're real deep. So, yeah. So I think we're gonna be able to. We're gonna cut these off at the dash bar actually, and just do it the right way since we're this far. Um, yeah. And I think so. These had a bend in them before, so Brad mapped it out. And I think we'll be able to come out of here with a straight tube to where the strut cup's gonna be, so it'll look right. Um, so yeah. But yeah, we're gonna get this cleaned up and then. Hopefully by the weekend and have struts back on. So. Yeah, that'd be sick. So, yeah. Look, awesome. look, yell at Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I just did what I was told, buddy. <laughs> I just did what I was told. <laughs> so, but the new struts, they're gonna fit under the hood, like everything at work. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And you're not gonna look, not gonna look like a trophy truck. No, I think we can actually just since we're. I was, we were gonna have to cut the rack off, right. but since we're, we're not doing that. yeah, then we'll just leave the rack where it is. We'll that'll work. So, that'll save a little bit of work, so, yeah, but. Yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking that might be the better route to go. That way I can switch everything over. Well, and then you got two combos that tune really the same, so. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It'll be the same, pretty much the same tune up, and then I can really, get a good head start on the, the engine tune-up. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, once it looks like something again, I'll send you some more pictures. Todd's got clean up work to do. All right, man. Thank you. You're welcome. See you, bud. I mean, we'll figure it out. But yeah, I gotta get up in here. Welding back to this is gonna be a good time. Oh, I can weld back to that. You gotta tag me in, but I'll do it. I weld until it gets challenging, and then it's like, <laughs> Jason! <laughs> 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 Come here! People on, people on YouTube ask me what I do all day. It's like, I talk on the phone, and then when the boys can't weld something, I get tagged in. That's... Which is very rare. <laughs> <laughs> Are their welders broke, and they're like, what? I got to fix that. No, we don't. We've never had any of them break. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't actually broke, broke. It's normally it's more, it's more, normally not the welder. It's the well door. <laughs> I don't get that hillbilly full of the... The welder... Yes. ...is the machine. The well door... ...is the user. Well, I, <laughs> I understand now. Going in. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my that was good. God next. <laughs> God next. Right. I, mean, I can't hardly cut up there with see if, if I'm gonna push up here. Yeah. I can only cut a little bit before I'm cutting into that one, so we might have to solve that. Milwaukee tools, great. Milwaukee blades, nah. What? You got any saws all blades? Saws all blades? Or bimetal blades? It don't matter. It all my junk Milwaukee ones are really not Look at that, the wall. Whoa, wow. That, that is boy? sexy, Stevie. Yeah. That'll be alright. We can try it. I'm not charging anything for it, so try it. <laughs> I like that wall mount, Stevie. You like that? Tiff, if you don't run 8,000 RPM, your blade will last eight times oh, as long. I'm running at half throttle. I hear you over there wide open. <laughs> That's half throttle, dude. Well, you Milwaukee, this Milwaukee M18, it makes like 500 horsepower. AK-47. Say hello to my little friend. Stevie. Well, I think you, uh, you could probably wiggle that. I don't know. There's no little wiggle. I might be able to spin it back and forth. Cause it really opened up. <laughs> Good looking, right? I'm gonna kill him. Hmm? I'm gonna kill him. He knows exactly what he's doing right now. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> you need these thoughts. 
Uh, yeah, maybe for the, we got, we're halfway there. Whoa! We're halfway there! Good, now let's try for the other half. Ah! You still got a long way to go, my guy. Well, I know. I'm, I got in there and got like half of it with my freaking grinder. Yeah. Because this one's actually, for some reason, it, it's tighter up here, but I can, because of the orientation of the grinder, I you can, can get, get it in, in there. Well, it's about. I know. There's that much in between the the cuts touching. I wonder if I could stick no. one of the little cutoff discs on a grinder in there. Not from this way. Well, like one of the little, like a Dremel almost. Let's stick it in here. Mm. Mm. From my professional opinion, I'm gonna say no. Keep it going. Yes, sir. Thank God we had that one. New blade left. <laughs> Good job done. All right. Well, got them all out. Hey, this thing. It's pretty hefty. Oh, it sounds like a tuning fork. I'm gonna voice to get on my microphone. You can tune a piano with this. <laughs> well, I think that's gonna be a wrap. That might be. For the day. Gonna be a chicken club rat. Well, so yesterday, obviously, you've seen the video, we did these bars. Is the light as bright when you're looking through the camera lens, Brad? It's pretty bright. You ever see that video of that kid over in like India, he's looking through a beer bottle? That sounds sketchy. Next, though, if you want to do a bar from here up to the strut cup. Yeah. We're gonna get that to correspond with where the front motor plate's gonna be. Gotcha. So I just mocked up this block in here and then took a straight edge off the face of it, put a mark there and a mark there where this is gonna land. Now we're getting ready to notch this guy and get it to fit. Finish her up. It's pretty tight. Damn, first try. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it be sometimes, you know. Really lock it in on the first first time you notch it. What do you think, Rick? No, I would already had it done, but always got to be behind the camera. I kept, I kept looking at this point, like, oh, this needs to. It looks great. What are you, what are you contemplating here? Well, I kept looking up here at this point. I'm like, oh, it's not covering my line. And then I didn't think about the fact that this has all been ground back to get that. So I actually need to be looking down here on the straight edge of the line, which really lines up pretty good. I got you. So. Fits a lot better than your tubes in Charlie Brown. I'll say that. Damn. It's Gap, C Gap City over there. Ouch. Sticks and stones may make my bone. My, I can't whoa, speak. Wait, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Really Sticks cool. and stones really may break my bones, <laughs> but Brad's words will always hurt. Brad kind of has the woman ver the woman, like when women have rest in bitch face. Or I think Brad has. <laughs> like he's kind of like uh, almost unapproachable. If you just like, if you don't know him, you might be a little intimidated. Why don't you us? Hey Brad, no, he, hey. Knows, he knows what's up. Hey, B said you're a dickhead. No, I didn't at <laughs> all. You did. nice as hell. <laughs> he said it. No, I said you could be intimidating and somebody yeah. might not want to approach you, he but said, if they you knew you, sometimes. if they knew you, they would approach you. But you you are a little unapproachable. <laughs> Kevin Hart, the funny bone before he was big, apparently told Brian or told the audience when Brian went to the bathroom that if he walked up to him in the hood, he would lock his doors. Unapproachable. <laughs> I don't know what you think about this is unapproachable. I'm definitely unapproachable. I'm super like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's messed up, buddy. You? You're soft. Ready? Do you want to sit on the big block? Come here. Oh, oh yeah. You go right in the belly. Oh yeah. Right in the big block. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's in there. Perfect. First try. That's crazy. Yeah. Really is crazy. Didn't take any time at all. 
like perfect. Sweet. So now you just disassemble all that and go to that side. Uh, yeah. Yep. That jig will get bolted up on the chassis jig over there. That will repeat the process.